Hello and welcome to Bunkum. My name's Anthony and today we're on episode 9,922,000 of Doki Doki Literature Club. I feel like this is going nowhere, I really do. Um, but I'm sure thing I did feel in the last episode things were changing. So hopefully this time round we're going to see something. Something's going to change. So without further ado, um, let's get stuck into the more poems because we all know you're looking forward to them. And I'm going to, going to go for Monica because we spoke quite a bit with Natsuki before, so I'm going to choose Na uh, Monica this time around. It's only fair. I'm trying to be fair to all of them. Hi, Anthony. Have you thought about what to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look, a look at today's poem. Sure. I'll let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. It's pretty good. You've been spending time with Natsuki, haven't you? How do they know this? How? How, how do they know this? Is it because I, I perhaps selected too many words that were more Natsuki-esque? Possibly. I thought it was pretty fair across the board though, but clearly I wasn't. You must like her writing style. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it's a neat way to tell a story. Hmm, I don't disagree. Natsuki's poems may be cute, but they're also meaningful. I can see why you'd be into their style. I guess that means you're not so much, so much of a fan of Yuri's poems, then. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I kind of like everyone's poems. That's true, but I'm sure you'd like some. So you like some more than others, right? Like Yuri's a use of complex words and symbolism, or Sayuri's way of expressing happiness or sadness in a more direct way. You must have some kind of preference, don't you? Ah, uh, not that it's it. Uh, not that it's a contest or anything. Exactly. I was just curious. That's all. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now. All right. Uh. All right. The lady who knew everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Oh, it's not scrolling down again. Scroll. Thank you. Oh, it's gone too far. Lost adrift the sky, victim of the current, uh, currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimming, glimmering in the twilight sky. Oh, have I gone too far again? Oh, I have. Crikey. Get in the middle. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall, and I fall, and I fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me, between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. There's definitely more of a morose tone in all the poems that I've read on this this time round. The, from the, the last episode and this one, they seem sombre. And I don't know whether I should be reading more into these poems. Like, the lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Hmm. You know... 
I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of, of on my mind, so I, that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, oh sorry it's Monica, in a way it's almost paradoxical. Because if we all had answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. Oh no, you know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Uh huh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures, aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd, uh, you'd know that better than anyone. You mean, you mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. See, it's things like that. These little things that are starting to... I'm putting together a jigsaw puzzle, but I don't know what it all means yet. Anyway, anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything you uh, that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to uh, continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? <laughs> That's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. She does that every time, doesn't he? Thanks for listening. <laughs> right, next, Natsuki, my lovely Natsuki. She's such a sweetie. <laughs> Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's it's really good, okay? There, I said it. This wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously. You'd think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's poems more than mine. Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you. Natsuki's face freezes like she's just realized something. Y y y you you're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hand and flutters to the floor. I... I have to use the bathroom. Red-faced Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Anthony. Did you do something to Natsuki? No. No. Innocent. Innocent. I did not a thing. Don't blame me of anything. Can't have those kind of accusations. I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No. I just told her that... My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Mm. Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly, pick, swiftly picks it up. She skims over it the second time, her smile not fading from her face. I see. At first I thought you liked her writing style, but you wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I, I, I mean... Not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Anthony? Cheating? Cheating? Cheating on what? Cheating? Yeah, exactly. What do you mean by that? Never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't. I. I don't understand. I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us have noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Uh, you should really stop reading things that aren't for you. You, you know. 
You have a bad habit of doing that. Eh? Uh? But... But Anthony wrote this poem, and we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Mm. Natsuki freezes. She apparently has forgotten that the poem is technically for everyone to read. Oh, well, I think Anthony is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like everyone, anyone would want to read it anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Uh, never mind. Well, I guess Natsuki has my poem now. Not that I really planned on keeping it. Anyway, my poem now. Oh, sorry. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only my... Uh, this is my only copy. I'll be your beach. <laughs> your mind is so full of trouble and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight. A sea that sparkles with bright light, brilliant light. The walls in your mind will men melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap, in a way, uh, in a way you thought had left you long ago. Oh, I'm lost. Uh, uh long ago there. Uh, let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the seaty, salty sea. And let me see your shine. You, let me see you shine. Let's uh, let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. Get a bit saucy. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. If you let me be by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Oh, Hers is far more lovey-dovey, I think. There's nothing cryptic in that one, is there? Yeah. I felt like uh, I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something that, uh, with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez, she's better not have said anything about, uh, bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same thing, the same topic. Ah, uh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write a simple topic, then trying to impress me... Then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, uh, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess ended up, uh, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with uh, doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was a good practice. Oh, okay, you three. Oh, okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Did I miss something? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong person. That's right. Did you deviate from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club? Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh -huh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh, don't say that. Uh, in your books, maybe. Look, the only different, uh, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, uh, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori, oh sorry, I'm doing the wrong voice again. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Why the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she went to just pee. <laughs> Natsuki, please don't, sh uh, please show some decency. 
Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times not to go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two, you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First, first of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ooh. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, you guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival pre preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them. And different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. <laughs> I love Natsuki. She's awesome. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori so would be helping me design them. And as for Yuri? Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. N no. That's not fair at all. That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? Poor Yuri. Why does she feel like that? Hmm. Everybody's down. Everybody's depressed. What's going on? Now Natsuki's pounding too. Jeez. I can't even tell now. I can I, Even I can tell now. <laughs> I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit. But I can tell things aren't uh, are even harder. Um, even harder on when on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case. But if I uh, if I can't be the leader of my own uh, on my own. Then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have a be you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set up the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes, and she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. You, your mind is already racing. I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Anthony. The one who is truly useless. Oh, that's, some, that's me saying it. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. I would, I would probably go a long way to... It would probably go a long way to give them one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really appreciate, I'd be really appreciative of that. Can't speak. Need more coffee. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of the club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me any choice. And you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Nasuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like a hand, uh, you'd like to handle the bacon on your own. Anthony may not be, uh, like to be around you if you, if, <laughs> Anthony may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Oh no. Sounds more like you're just making excuses for energy to... W what are you saying? It will be an extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't... Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Anthony to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So, I'm sure he's interested in... 
You literally just said. I, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just sell this already? Yeah. Anthony, you're okay with this, right? No, 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 I'm not. In the end, it's up to you. Of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. <laughs> oh, God. What am I supposed to do in this situation? Um... Now, I think, because Sayori's not here, I'm going to give Sayori a hand because she's the one that's most down in the dumps. That sounds logical to me. She's not here. She's down in the dumps. And I don't know what she's doing, so I'm going to give her a hand. So it's going to be Sayori. Sorry. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I'd prefer to help Sayori. Uh, I mean, we're already neighbours and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Oh, crumbs. Yeah, I forgot about that. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? No, 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 no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this be too... I uh, didn't mean for this to be difficult. Oh, just think of the club, okay? Mm, okay, so Sayori's helping... Mo well, if Sayori is helping Monica, then it's between Natsuki and Yuri. I haven't spent that much time with Yuri. I spent more time with Natsuki, so I'm going to go for Yuri. Well, I'll probably be the most uh, useful helping out Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki? I can already tell you you're about to say something mean. No. I was just saying... Uh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Anthony? Yes. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. Yeah, she's been down. I think she needs the support. Uh, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Oh, sorry, I did the wrong voice. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everyone? Everything we need to uh, need us to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? <laughs> no, I'm anxious now after making those tough decisions. Well, oh no, wrong voice. Well, excited might not uh, might not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Anthony? No, me, me. Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it turns out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Oh, sorry. Natsuki? No, sorry, wrong voice again. Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I meant at all. I, uh... Yuri actually glances between everyone in the room. I, I, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Anthony picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They really go well with my tea. And nothing I, that I do for the event will compare to that. So, so... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. But why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I always know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I... Uh, I, I, I know. I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, uh, yeah, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. 
even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she's tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes aren't going to be the best part of... You bet... <laughs> I'm going to start that again. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. Thank God for that. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Oh, uh, um, eh, I turn around. Sorry, I, I realise that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best, yes. All right, then. Yuri and I, Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? I, is that a problem? No, no, not at all. I just thought it would be one of... Uh, uh, I'd, I would be the one going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. Ah, uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. All right. Sounds good. Fine. No worries. In that case, it wouldn't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way. Oh, I didn't mean to press enter. Oops. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you. Uh, yeah, I'm not near as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Anthony. I think you well may. Uh, I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you choose me, even if you chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? I didn't feel well. I kind of do feel bad for her because I haven't spent that much time with her. So she needs a bit of TLC. I don't know. It's difficult for me to come up with any other reason. For, oh, press enter again. You're forgetting the reason. Uh, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. I can't. I can't speak. And I keep on pressing enter because of these fat digits. You're forgetting the one reason for the most common sense. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh. Uh, I, I didn't realise... I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if uh, it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. Am I really... I am, uh, and I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way to the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. <laughs> Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday, even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might, have, uh, might end up happening when we're outside of school. She might even, uh, she even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds uh, that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like that. Uh, like we feel that way about each other. See, I don't know. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's truth. It's already Sunday. Oh God. I've been getting incredibly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is, Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a bit when it's just the two of us. 
Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long enough before I was also uh, I was already learning more about her. Uh, but putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard anything uh, from Sayori since she, uh, she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between Sayori, uh, between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside, feelings aside when she might me uh, might need me? Exactly. Need to go to see Sayori. Good. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Shiro's house, I knock on the door before entering myself. Again, we used to play off so often that we, we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I'm assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to the room, better to a bedroom, bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Anthony. How long are we going for? We just do this one and have to save. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to, it's, uh, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognise the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to, be see uh, aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you... Oh, wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that, uh, decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, uh, so it's just me and Yuri then? Yeah. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behaviour is really un uncharacteristic. I finally get out. Uh, finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So? Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Antony. Eh? Yeah. Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and actually express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been even thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori? I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh, uh. So Uri gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Anthony. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Anthony? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had a really bad... Uh, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't f even find a reason to get out of bed. 
My reason, do you think, uh, what reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy in caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I, I actually do feel quite in shock, actually, now. I wasn't quite expecting that at all. And it's quite... It's quite an emotional moment, this, more than the other ones. Because depression is an awful, awful thing for anybody to have to suffer. Um, and because this whole game is always so happy and in your face, having it go off at a tangent like this is quite unexpected. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sari kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like you I've been betrayed as your closest friend. Because if I knew I would have done something, I, I could to uh, I, I could have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much like that I could do. I would have tried a bit, little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, do you, uh, Anthony? Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Nah. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing, best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why, that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Uh -huh. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Antony. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped me is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears stri uh, streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished, and I was punished by my heart hurting in the way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here Oh, bugger, missed that bit. Can I go back? I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Nobody ever, ever, ever should feel that way. Ever. Period. If anybody feels like that, they, they need to speak to people. As difficult as it might be, they need to speak to people. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, Anthony. Sayori. I don't care if you... F uh, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never under underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Antony. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Don't do this. Antony, I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. 
but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayuri finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Anthony. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. <laughs> oh, I'm going to start sobbing in a minute. Sari lets go of me. And she, do as she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, all right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sari wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day with her a uh, day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have... Uh, of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, no don't. Please don't. If you do that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost oh, its almost time for, uh, for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if I would be very good. Uh, it would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, right? All right. I look forward to it. Oh my God. I say goodbye to Surrey and exit her house. Right, I'm gonna finish this here. This has taken a, a, a complete tangent and it's taken me, it's knocked me off guard a little bit. I wasn't really expecting for Sayori to be like that. I thought it was gonna be something trivial but that's quite a big thing for anyone to deal with. Um, so it is a bit of a surprise. Um, but I'm gonna leave this episode here. I'm gonna reflect on it and comment on it uh, in the next video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough. Um, if you like my content, please like and subscribe. Um, but until then, thank you so much for watching. It is greatly appreciated. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Laters.